Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, which is probably the last video in this short course, I'm going to give you an exercise which you can try if you want with Java Streams. I decided just to give you one exercise. I think the things that we've seen in this course are pretty easy to practice. If you just type them out and try them out in a few different ways, it's pretty easy to get used to them, to be honest. The only thing that I think is really hard with streams is this business of assembling collectors and that's not that hard once you've got into the swing of it. So I'm going to give you a exercise you can try if you want that involves connecting different collectors together. So I'm going to explain the exercise to you and then if you want to you can pause the video and have a go at it yourself and see how far you get. So the exercise is this and you're going to need a sample of text for this and then for every initial word letter in that text file. So in other words, for every letter you can find that starts a word, list all the words over seven letters that begin with that letter in alphabetical order. If there are no words over seven letters beginning with that letter, just give an empty list. So the list that you produce in the end should look something like this, or part of it should do. I've got letters listed here, and they're all initial letters of words that actually occur in the text. So you won't necessarily have all the letters in the alphabet. And then for each letter, we've got an alphabetically ordered list of words that start with that initial letter and are over seven letters long. And by the way, when I say list, I'm using this in a kind of informal way because this could be an ordered set if you like. Now I'm going to explain to you how you can load some text into a stream. And for that, we need some sample text. I've created a GitHub repository for this course. You can find it at github.com slash cave of programming slash java hyphen streams. So if you just go to github.com slash cave of programming, there you can see the source code for more or less all of my courses, which I always release free anyway. And we've got this Java streams repository for this particular course. If we go to 11, because this is the 11th video in the course, I've got this sample text, which is some text taken from the Charles Dickens novel Great Expectations, which is a great novel. Let's go to the raw view here, and then I can just copy that text, and I can create that as a file within Eclipse. So how you actually access text files that are gonna be part of your project varies a little bit between different development environments. I'm gonna to try to explain here as I go along. In Eclipse, what I want to do is create some sort of a folder to put this file in. So I'll right click here and go to new, and I've got a choice of different kinds of folders that I can create. I think what I'll do is create a new source folder. I'll call that text, click finish, and within there I'll create a new file called sample.txt. And I've already got my app.java here. Now the thing is you have to remember that your program's gonna get compiled, and depending on your IDE and how it's configured, the compiled program that actually runs is not necessarily going to run from the same folders that your source files exist in. Usually it won't. So one thing I like to do if I'm dealing with files that are somehow part of my project is to try to find out where the working directory actually is. What directory does the program think it's running in? Now there are various ways to do that. And I see from doing some searching on the internet that for every way that exists, there is someone saying this way doesn't work under particular circumstances. But I'll show you nevertheless how I usually do this. So let's just have a sys out here. And I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna specify as the directory for the file dot, which should be the current directory, whatever the running program thinks the current directory is. Let's add the import for file. And then we should be able to add on get canonical path or get absolute path. Let's run this and I see that this is apparently the working directory of my program. So then the question is, where's this sample text relative to that? And I'm assuming here that I'm not gonna be deploying this program from a jar because after all, it's just a little demo program. So I, I want to get to the actual file rather than load it from some resource. Let's copy that and go to that in the Mac equivalent of Explorer, which is called Finder. 
So if I go to this folder, so here's what my project looks like. I've got the source stuff in there. We can see that the source folder has actually been created here. So it's been created within what the running program thinks is the working directory, the way I've got Eclipse configured, which is the default configuration. You can also see a bin folder there. And the sample.txt has actually been copied into that. It's been deployed in effect. So really, we've got a choice now about where we can load this from. Since this is the deployed file, I think I'm going to load it from here. So relative to the working directory, we have to go into bin, and then we've got sample.txt. Or the alternative would be I could go into this text folder and load it from there. So it doesn't really matter which, as long as we can get to it somehow. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a path, which we're going to need to use to create our stream. Let's write path, I'll just call this path equals path dot of, and we can put a URL or just a string of some sort in there. So remembering this is relative to the working directory, we can go into, let's go into bin and then load sample.txt from there. So bin slash sample.txt. And I'm interested to check whether this file really exists. So let's do sysout path dot to file dot exists and see what that produces. And if I run that, we get true. So we're on the right track. Now we can easily create a stream from the text in this file with files dot lines. Let's write files dot lines and load that path. And since that can potentially throw a IO exception, I'm just going to throw that out of main since this is just a test program. And what we get from this is a stream, which I'll just call lines. So now we've got a stream which we can use, for example, we can do for each and system.out colon colon print ln. And if we run this, we should see the text from the file, except that I forgot to paste any text in there. So let's do that. Let's copy this text and go back to sample.txt. Just to make sure this does get deployed properly, I'm just going to do a project clean, rebuild the thing. And then if we run the program, we get a load of text. Now notice we've got a warning here and it's just telling us that we've not closed the stream resource. So in this case, when we load a file with files.lines, we're supposed to close the stream later. So I'm just going to put lines.close after I finished using it. Okay, so if you want to, have a go at this exercise and see how far you get. If you're not an experienced programmer, my advice would be the same as it always is, which is build up your program bit by bit. So don't just write a load of stuff and hope that it works. Write a little bit and find some way of testing that, checking that it's doing what you expect, add another little bit and so on, and see how far you can get with this. Even if you don't manage the whole thing, you should be able to manage some of it, probably at this point in the course, if you remember the stuff that we've gone through. Okay, so pause your video if you want to have a go at this, because now I'm going to show you how I would go about tackling this. So we have to deal with words here, but what I've got is presumably lines. If your file doesn't have line breaks in it, you might even just have one line. And what we need to do is break this up into words. So for every line, I'm going to have multiple words. And that suggests that map isn't going to be sufficient. What I need is flat map, which can produce multiple elements for every elements in my stream. So let's put in here a flat map. Now I need to break each line into separate words. So we could use the string.split method. Let's get the string that we're dealing with here. And we could use s.split, but that will actually return an array. For the moment, let's just put in a space in double quotes like that. So I need to, instead of returning an array, I need to return a stream from flat map, remember. So let's use stream dot of and use that to turn my returned array of words into a stream. And let's take a look at what we've got. So it does look like we've kind of done something of a kind of at least halfway job of turning this into words. If you want to be really sure about what you're actually getting back, one thing you can do, which we've used before, 
is to surround each element in the stream, if it's a string, with, let's say, single quotes. So let's do system.out.println. In fact, I'm going to use printf, print format. And then we will specify that we want to print each element within single quotes. And I say %s because I'm dealing with strings and I pass the string I want to print to it. And for good measure, let's also put a new line after that since it doesn't produce one by itself. And now we can see what we've actually got. It does look like they've been split up pretty well. I think we've got some completely blank strings in there. We've got a lot of cases as well where punctuation has been included in the word. Now it has to be said that there is no simple, reliable way to split up a text file into words. There are always lots of edge cases which you kind of need to go over usually by hand and deal with them. And eventually you get a program that can split text into words with <laughs> some kind of reliability. But it's one of those tasks where there's always lots of edge cases that aren't going to quite fit into how you think a word should be defined. But what we can do that I think may be a bit nicer for our purposes here is use a regular expression. And rather than just split on space, I'm going to split on a character class. So we'll have different alternative characters to split on. And what I'm going to say is split on anything that is not in the range capital A to capital Z, nor in the range lowercase a to lowercase z. So we're going to split on any character that isn't these. That's a not. And we're going to consider multiple separators to be just one separator. So I'm going to put plus in there, which means one or more of the preceding. And if we run this, then it looks pretty good. Maybe we should do something about these cases where we've got double quotes that have nothing in the middle of them. So for that, I could use a filter. Let's put in dot filter. And we could say s arrow s dot length is greater than zero. At this point, I don't want to already filter out words that are seven letters or less because I want to have a empty list for initial letters if there are no words of more than seven characters for that initial letter. So I haven't yet got the initial letters at this point. So I still need to get all the words, not just the ones longer than seven letters. Let's take a look at this. So we shouldn't have any words of zero length in there now. I can't see any. And one thing you'll notice is that we've got uppercase and lowercase. And I didn't say anything about separating out the cases here. So let's have a map in here, which maps to lowercase. Let's write dot map and we can use string to lower case. And then if we run that, we should get only lowercase words. So that looks pretty good. This way of splitting up strings is going to discard some words that really should be considered complete words. Like maybe if you have a word with an apostrophe at the end or a word that has an apostrophe S at the end, probably would want to consider that a complete word, but we're not going to do anything that sophisticated here. So I think this will do for our purposes. Now we can already change this for each to a collect method because the rest of the stuff we need to do is going to involve collectors. So let's get rid of this and write collect. And I'm going to try to arrange this in some kind of a nice way because it's going to get a little bit complicated. And what I want to use in there is going to be grouping by, and I'm going to try to arrange this nicely as well. And what do we want to group by? Well, the first letter of each word, so we can get each element in the stream, each word, and then say s dot char at zero to get the zeroth character. I need to add the import for grouping by. So let's go to the top and say import static java.util.stream.collectors.star and that should compile and we need to get the return result from this. So let's say var result equals and we could put in some code so that we can view the result nicely. You can just do a system dot print line on that but then it's going to come out all in one line. So let's go down here and say for var e for entry 
in result.entry set because it's going to be a map because we're using collect grouping by. And then we can have a system.out.print line and e.get key. And let's add on here some punctuation to make it look nice and then have a e.get value. And we'll run that and take a look at it. So that's what we've got at the moment. Uh, for each initial letter that occurred in the text, we've got by default an array list of words. So we're going to have duplicates in there and the words aren't necessarily going to be in alphabetical order. In fact, you can see that they aren't. And we've also got words that are less than seven letters. So we have to deal with both of those things. Let's start by filtering this list. Let's have a filtering collector as the second argument to grouping by. And again, I'll try to arrange that well. And we want to filter out anything that isn't more than seven letters. So let's say s arrow s dot length is greater than seven. That's all we're interested in. And we can collect that somehow. For the moment, let's collect it into a list. And I need a comma there. We also need a comma here. And then if I run this, okay, so that looks a lot better. We've cut this down a lot. And look, we've got a lot of empty lists because in many cases we compiled the list. And then at this point, we filtered all of the words out of that list. So we've got no words over seven characters that begin with J apparently in this text, according to our definition of a word at least. So the final task is to organize these in alphabetical order. And we only want unique lists of words. So like here, for example, we've got a word repeated. We only want unique words. So we can deal with both the order of the elements and also getting rid of duplicates if we just put them into a tree set. Because a tree set will not store duplicates. It will effectively remove duplicates like all sets. And a tree set in particular will sort the items within it in their natural order, which for strings is basically alphabetical order. So let's write here to collection. And here we can have tree set colon colon new to create a tree set. Let's add the import for tree set. And if we run this, then finally, I think we've got what we want. So that's how I like to approach problems like these. I like to build them up step by step, checking at every step to see what's happening. Of course, you can also use peak, but don't forget peak is going to produce nothing unless you have a terminal operation. Because as we've seen, streams do lazy evaluation, where if you don't force them to do something by having a terminal operation, then they won't do anything because they don't have to. So the GitHub repository for this source code again is at github.com slash caveaprogramming slash java hyphen streams if you want the source code. And don't forget, if you register to my site, caveaprogramming.com, you can also get some free courses. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, happy coding.